Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I am Jasmine Al-Shamsi speaking to you from uh, Lima. It's a great pleasure to open this cultural event about uh, national, national uh, attire across the world. Today we'll be talking about the national attire of uh, United Arab Emirates and the national attire of the Republic of Peru. We have through this discussion uh, two excellent guests. Allow me to introduce Mr. Hussam Mohammed Jabber, consultant uh, specialized in the UAE national dress. Thank you for being with us here, uh, Mr. Hussam. And from Peru, Ms. Claudia Bertelero, fashion designer. It's a pleasure to have you with us today, uh, Claudia. We're going to start with Mr. Hussam, who's going to speak about the UAE uh, national attire. Mr. Hussam, if you are ready, go ahead, please. Unmute your mic and start. Thank you, sir. Good evening, good morning in uh, Peru. My name is uh, Hussam. Uh, I'm a traditional and historical costume uh, consultant. Um, I started that passion since childhood. It has been growing with me until it became my specialty. Um, today, I'll be speaking to you about the Emirati uh, costume. Uh, which is, if we if we go back in history, it's very, very rich. Uh, and what we see now of the elegance uh, is just related to the elegant history of the UAE uh, costume or UAE attire. I'm going to make it uh, simple today, inshallah. Uh, I'm going to divide it into three main elements. Uh, first element is the head cover. Second element is the body cover. The third element is the shoes. Karamkum Allah. I want to karam uh, The three elements are very related to each other. The first element, the head cover, has three parts. First part is the agal, which is the wool. Uh, the wool piece, I call it the black crown. Uh, it's made out of wool, natural wool. Since the old, old days, they used to uh, put it on, on the ghatra, which is the second part. Um, it's a white sheet made out of pure cotton. Uh, it's folded to be in a triangle way, or be on the head, and the black crown on the top of it. Uh, as you can see behind me uh, over here. And there is the gahfiya, what we call the gahfiya. It's a net sewn by hand just to make this whole set of uh, the whole headset um, firm, not moving left or, uh, left and right. That's about the uh, head cover. Uh, about the ghatra, we have the summer season ghatras, which is the cotton, the white cotton one. And we have the uh, turma, the shawl, which is made in Kashmir. Usually since the old days, they used to import them from Kashmir through Bahrain, usually, uh, for the winter season, of course. Uh, and we got the shimad also as a head cover in plenty of uh, colors. That, that depends on the season, uh, depends on the taste, and some other factors. Depends on the occasion you're going to. Um, that's uh, in simple form. The they they talk about the head cover. We'll go to the second part, which is the body cover. Uh, we have continued items, I call them, and we have discontinued items since the old days. Continued items uh, are the kandura, which has continued since the old days, uh, which is what you can see me wearing now here. Uh, it hasn't changed since maybe uh, 150 years or more. Uh, the color 
the official color is the white one, the, but people used to dye it in the old days with some natural color, colors like the saffron or the pomegranate. Uh, so with natural colors to make it full of life and to make it suitable for, for the environment uh, in the old days. Um, and then uh, we have the best. The best is the is actually it's my favorite part to talk about the the best. And if, if I talk like for one week, it's 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 not enough for the best. It's I I call it the, the sign of wealth and the social level, as it used to be since hundreds of years till this moment. It's still uh, a sign of wealth and the social uh, social level. It comes in different uh, sh uh, color shades. It comes in different uh, material. That depends also on the season. We have here two main seasons in the in this area, like the, the summer. And the winter, when it gets cold, you wear the, the heavy material, and when it gets uh, hot in the summer, you still wear a best, but the lighter ones. All of them are uh, hand weaved, hand stitched. As you get closer, like if you get closer to the, uh, to the best, you will see how much art it has. You will see how much effort was. Uh, paid to make one piece, then you'll know that it used to cost so much, and uh, not, it's not, it wasn't available like for everybody to wear. Um, and nowadays, it's still a sign of the social level, sign of uh, uh, a formal sign. Like when you go to a meeting, I'm sure the royalty are wearing it, the ministers are wearing it. When um, when it's a formal situation or formal occasion, everybody's wearing the best. Of course, um, the best has, uh, has been used more, way more than uh, how much it was, it's, it's being used nowadays. Like in the old days, everybody's like looking, uh, uh, trying to look formal, trying to look uh, luxurious, trying to look uh, as elegant as possible. Um, but nowadays, like, due to the uh, social life and uh, like po people keep moving, and it's not very practical, to be honest. The bish is very royal, very elegant, but it's not very practical to be on all the time. So. Uh, there's many reasons that uh, it's being used uh, less than in the past. Um, the types of the best, the winter best and the summer best, they used to be imported from main uh, areas. Uh, they are from Bahrain, they used to import them from Bahrain, from uh, Iraq from uh, for the summer i'm talking about the the summer but for, for the winter best used to get them from uh, syria mainly because of the heavy material they have and the professionals in weaving of heavy materials there in uh, syria uh, we should mention the sharjawi best in the pilgrimage, uh, Muslim al Hajj, in the pilgrimage season, they used to ask about uh, people like people used to uh, ask for the Sharjawi bish, that bish which is made in Sharjah, for uh, nice details, uh, lovely shape, lovely color shades. That's about uh, the best for now. I have to talk about some discontinued, as the fashion designer here, uh, Miss Claudia, she will understand about continue, when I say continued collection or discontinued collection. The Kandura and the Bisht are continued collection, like they are there all the time. They're since 
hundreds of years they are there. This continued collection, when you come to the historical or to, to the traditional uh, Emirati attire, uh, which is the waist coast, uh, waistcoat, I'm sorry, the vest, the waistcoat, they used to wear it in, in the past. Um, reason, like, uh, is that there was a, a, an, an influence uh, from an English taste, like, the, it's it's just exactly same like the waist coat uh, the waist coat of the English suit. It's exactly the same. They used to wear it to keep the uh, pocket watch, some pearls for for the pearl merchants, some amount of money. Like it's more handy at the uh, old days, but um, and it was for everybody for royalty for public, for everybody. It's it's very elegant. To be honest, I see it very elegant and um, um, I don't like that it's a discontinued uh, piece of uh, our clothes has gone away. I'm trying to wear it myself. I'm trying to wear it and bring it back to life because it's very elegant, to be honest. Um, let's come to the next discontinued thing, but still in, uh, very rare to see people wearing it now, which is the jacket, the English suit jacket. Uh, people used to wear it like in the winter season, like over the uh, Kandura, and they wear the best over that. And from my experience of from my research, as I have seen, much more than that. Uh, the, uh, today, uh, any, today's session, I'll make it. I'll make it short with uh, those elements. While it's way more more than that, we have way more than these elements, and I would like to share with you, if you allow me, uh, Mr. Jason and Miss Claudia, to share. A picture which inspires me. That's uh, our founder, our father. We call him Baba Zayed. Uh, may God bless his soul. Uh, he was he was um, taking good care of the tradition inviting people, like uh, asking people always to um, keep an eye on the tradition, always keep an eye, always stick to the tradition, stick to the, to the culture, stick to your roots. So uh, that, that picture inspires me a lot. And he was wearing that uh, waistcoat and uh, he was wearing the mahzam to uh, which, which is the leather piece to put the bullets um, another picture i would love to share if you allow me guys uh, this one sheikh zaid rahmatullah ali with the jacket that's in front of uh, qasr al hassan al hassan palace such a lovely picture with his smile, Rahmatullah Ali, when he's wearing the dagger, the Emirati uh, Khanjar, and we have uh, here one of our friends specialized in, in Khanjars and daggers we might talk about in future, inshallah. Uh, and at the end of my little talk i would like to uh, send an invitation to everybody who's having at home or in his collection any pieces that uh, any piece that is related to our culture uh, um, of fashion wise like any piece a jacket uh, an old jacket an old gatra uh, an old gal an old bisht um that will that will be very helpful to send that piece or send that uh, collection to the concerned uh, department 
for to, to continue the researches and for the reason of researchers and documentation this will help a lot in sending uh, sending uh, a conclusion sending uh, an information that you can depend on for future researches for future generations we are documenting our history with uh, the help of these uh, pieces so uh, that's one thing I would like to uh, ask everybody about. And the second thing to ask uh, is to keep an eye on the tradition uh, outfit, not to mess with, always protected, always uh, keep it the way it used to be. And, uh, make it... Uh, make it the the way it used to be or do it wear it the way it used to be don't try to mess or the or change the soul of the, the traditional outfit especially in the gulf area that we have uh, some differences between the little differences uh, in the gulf area between uh, the countries in the shapes of Kandura, let's say, little differences in the shape of the Agal, little differences. Um, so I invite everybody to uh, keep an eye and protect the, the original shape of your uh, culture, the original shape of your costume, because that means a lot. And we need, it's uh, uh, something very important that we need to shift to the future generations and something that we need to document uh, and thank you very much for listening uh, it was my pleasure to talk uh, about our costume uh, mr jason please thank you very much uh, mr sam uh, this is claudia it's your turn to elaborate about the national uh, of Peru. We are very excited to hear uh, about it. Please unmute and uh, start. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Claudia Bertolero. I'm a fashion designer based in Peru. I'm uh, uh, the Peruvian brand ambassador of my country with great honor. And it's a great pleasure to be sharing something about my country with you all. I will be presenting a brief history of the Peruvian national attire of men's clothing. So let's begin. Peru is located in the, in the western part of South America, shares its border with many countries. As you see, we have in the north, Ecuador and Colombia, in the east, Brazil, in the south, Bolivia and Chile. We share our coast with the Pacific Ocean. Our main language is Spanish, but our used to be Quechua that we still use. Peruvians maintain a very strong sense of national identity through clothing supported by color, design, and materials. Here we have an image that shows especially the typical dance, and we see that the men are wearing the headdress, the montera, which shows the social status that got very influenced in that period. The image depicts men in traditional dance garments expressing the cultural identity of the mountain region. This is one of my favorite pictures because it really shows what Peru is all about. Peru is about color, embroidery, symbolism, shape. Here, as you can see, it shows like a mountain that is called Diapu, 
Apu is the connection, the god of the Andes. And this is a typical traditional dance garment called choking, Chonginara. And it's, I love it because it's, it means a lot and it shows how the artisan works uh, this, this, their, their pieces. Now in this slide, we'll show, we'll see the material evolution of men's clothing. But I would like to point out the gold Intihuatana sundial. It means that Peruvians are children of the sun. And this image, you will see it in, uh, in the history of Peru many times. And the materials of evolution men's clothing, I divided in five eras, which are the pre-Inca, the Inca, the colonial, the Republic and the modern. The pre-Inca is it's divided in many cultures, but there are so many that I will not have the time to share it with you in 20 minutes. So I will discuss only four, Mochica, Paracas, Chavín, Ichimu. Mochica culture. In this image, as you can see, we see the Lord of, of Sipan. He used to be the ruler, a very important guy that uh, by, by the, word, the way he's dressed, we can see that he, he's a powerful man in comparison to the person behind. He wears a lot of gold. The Lord of Sipan introduced materials like gold, feathers, and other precious stones and metals. Men's clothing were a direct representation of their social status. The more decorative, the more powerful they were. So you'll see through the presentation this, uh, this fact. Symbolism was created through anthropomorphic figures. And anthropomorphic figures is the mix of human and animal all together. Paracas culture. This is my favorite. I'm a fashion textile designer and uh, I got very uh, influenced by this period. The, uh, they were an elite class known for their textile work. Began, they began to dye their fabrics, their yarns with natural elements. You could see the shape, the square, the square base, as you can see, they were, they're, they're squares based on geome geometric designs and I'm telling a little bit about the story. It's like a patchwork. Each piece is different from the other. So they're telling their daily life, where they come from, their social status. It's like uh, telling a story. Men's clothing were hand woven and bands, belts, and tunics were used to signify status. We have here the Chavin culture. The, the economic based on potatoes and corn, but also they, they, uh, they play an important role. And we see here with the tunic, the tunic is called the unku, it's made out of feathers and they dye them. And they, we can see that they use all as well silver and uh, in their aspect in the, um, how you call this, the, the crown. The, the sector with they were with feathers and uh, shoes were silver were, had silver trims. Also it's very important to, to see that you'll see the difference between one culture through the other because and some, sometimes you will see some relations, but in this occasion it's completely different from the one that I said previously, the Baracas one. The Chimu culture instead, is a master in textile, ceramics, and goldsmith. Instead, Paracas was only master in textiles. Here we see that they were in major, um, they were aware of textiles, ceramics, and goldsmith. Um, their, their garments became more elaborate with geometric, with figures, and they, the men's clothing consisted in taparrabos, which they covered the private area. And there were tunics, we are the uncus, the ponchos, and sleeveless shirts. The Peruvian culture is very vast. So it's 
difficult to narrow it in 20 minutes, but I would like to, to share with you now the Inca period. The luxury was a privilege only for men. There were distinct difference between the Inca, the nobility, and the people. It existed through the quality of their fabrics and adornments. Here, I would like to point out the way the Inca is dressed. He has, uh, the tunic is called the unku. The belt is called the tocapo. The, the, he has a lot of bracelets, and he had the, the crown that is the mascaipacha. And the sector is called the suntul pauka. He has geometric, geometric and symbols ornaments. And the shoes, they use it nowadays as well, is called the usuta o ojota. The tunic is made out of alpaca, and um, he has a cape that is called Yakoya. Those, those names are, made, uh, are they come from Quechua, so that's why they're not really familiar with, uh, with Spanish. This period, I love it, uh, is the colonial one, influenced me a lot in my career. Here we have the, the influence of the Spanish people that came to conquer Peru, and the people um, that live, the indigenous, they didn't like uh, that they, they came here to change their customs, uh, the, the way they, they, they used to dress. So they, they, they were forced to. So what they did instead, they used the pants, the blouse, the jacket that the Spanish people brought, but they put the tunic on top in, in, um, in honor of their tradition, of their culture. And also they were um, ornaments to keep them as, as a reminder of where they came from, you know? So it's very important to, to point that out. And the Spanish people in, during that time, they brought the lace, the bro brocade, the velvet into the tradition of the Inca styles. So it's like a fusion. In the Republic area uh, period, we'll see that the Tapada Limeña came, it was an important um, uh, attire. Why? Because it, got, it started on the colonial and it remains until the beginning of the Republic. It was like um, a, to see, to show and not to show. And um, definitely during that time, we created our flag, the national anthem, our currency, and their seal. But I would like to point out that uh, this lasted three decades and people tried to change it, uh, the nobility, the, the, um, the religions, but they were not able to. Then here, the Republic changed. After that transition, it came um, the, the period where we got inspired by the um, French, French uh, culture that brought many ways, uh, the ways he was dressed, he looks like a, a French guy. No, he's wearing pants and the jacket and he's the first time he's wearing a band that he's the president of, uh, of Peru, Luis José de Orbegoso. And then here we come, comes the modern, modernity, so the modern time. Here we see uh, that they were, even though it came with a lot of, of, of changes, um, through the previous previous time, we see that we love our culture. We love where we come from. So we see the dances, the typical dance. They show our colors, our traditions, the way we we dance, the way we we dress, and it's a way of showing um, their their tradition through generation uh, to the gener generation. It's a fusion of the old and the new. I would like to point out that Peru is divided in four regions, the Pacific Ocean, the coast, the mountains, and the jungles. Now I would like to talk about the coast because the, the attire is different from the other ones. The coast, here the weather is hotter, and um, so the fabric has to be light. We use a lot of cotton. In the previous times, we used to have 24 types of cottons. Nowadays, we have only four, and we still use them. 
uh, normally they dressed in white, a, like a white t-shirt, jacket, but we will use accessories and the accessories are the handkerchief and uh, the hat. The hat is made of a uh, toquilla. Yeah, it comes from Cajamarca. Now here in the mountains, you will see completely different from the coast. We see colors. The weather is uh, cooler, uh, so they need to protect themselves. So they wear like the poncho, okay? And we see that he's using the montera, which I mentioned previously, which is the headdress that shows status. This person is, is the, the major of chincheros, and uh, it's nowadays, so it's nothing that, that uh, is, uh, is old, it's something new. We keep this tradition into, until today. And we show two, the, two symbols. He's wearing the barayok, which symbolizes the authority because he's nominated to be the major. And then he has the montera, which I mentioned, that shows also does his social status. I, I put some images related to the mountains. We have the el chuyo, we have the boncho, all done by hand. We have the tradition, especially in the way they, they, they cultivate, uh, cultivate the, their, their fields as well, the way they dress for dancing occasions. And, um, and we have I, um, Ayama, this case uh, okay, you know, okay, you know. Instead, the jungle period, uh, time, uh, the weather is hotter. The fabric we use is the, the kushma. The kushma is, um, for the men, is a, they do it in vertical lines, and for the women, it's horizontal. And there is, um, it's used in three colors, the brown, kind of reddish, the, in a dark silver, and in the cream. And the accessories, we see that they're wearing feather as a crown. And, uh, and here at the right, we see that they're using, um, it's called, a, it's a dance, the yawa, and uh, it's, uh, it's made of vegetable, of, with, of, uh, of plants, of plants. It's a tradition they still use. And now Peru is so well known for the manual loom. So I would like to share that this, the manual looms, it tells like a story, it's a language, it's, a, it's, a, it's translating stories. The colors mean something. And we use los auquenidos, and we use the vicuña, la alpaca, la llama, el guanaco. They're the typical auquenidos of the mountains. And we see here different ones. They're all handmade and they, uh, they show how they, how they do it. We have many. And here we, they use a uh, natural color from the alkenidos that we see on the side. Then here, I would like to share with you, if you do allow me to, I, I got inspired in the Peruvian Paso horse. The Peruvian Paso horse is, uh, is a tradition, um, is, uh, is the, the, the silence ambassador of our country. And it's related uh, from the coast. I got inspired on the coast. As you can see, the poncho, the way, he, the way he's dressed. And uh, that influenced a lot in my career. It's already 15 years that I, that I started with a lot of effort and I keep, I keep going. And uh, from that tradition, I changed it to modernity, keeping the essence. And that's what I did. I use leather, silver, and I use as well alpaca, baby alpaca. I kept the point, uh, the, I kept the, the hat, the Tokia hat, and um, it's basically I, my work. And I would like to thank, thank everyone for their time and to allow me to show a little bit about my country and my work. Thank you.
Thank you uh, very much, Claudia. It was very interesting to hear from uh, both of you uh, about this traditional subject where we can uh, connect uh, cultural uh, bridges between uh, both friendly countries. Uh, if you may allow me to share my experience with the UAE national costume. Based on my experience as a diplomat located in, uh, in Peru, uh, usually I wear the formal uh, Andorra, what I'm wearing now, uh, during uh, national ceremonies such as the National Day of the UAE during the celebration of the embassy on the 2nd of uh, December uh, every year. In addition, I have participated in the celebration of the New Year Eve uh, hosted by His Excellency Martin Vizcarra, the previous president of uh, Peru. And the embassy is uh, going uh, uh, to host many cultural events uh, led by His Excellency Mohammed uh, Al Shamsi, the UAE ambassador uh, to the Republic of uh, Peru, expecting that those uh, events uh, will knowledge uh, the Peruvian community about the UAE culture, uh, tradition, and uh, heritage. Well, uh, it's time for the questions. I will be asking a general question for uh, both of you. Uh, then you will have the chance to ask each other. Uh, I'll start with you, Claudia. Uh, in your opinion, why is the traditional clothing important? What do you think? Well, basically, thank you for the question. Uh, tradition is, like I mentioned before, is very important. And uh, in the Peruvian attire, we see it that it could change through the times, but it will remain. Peru is very, uh, is very uh, attached to, to their culture, to their tradition and we like to keep it and uh, we are very proud. So that's what I would like to, to share with you, my, my personal experience. Thank you very much. And, uh, Sam, would like to hear your opinion, uh, the traditional clothing, why it's uh, important? Why you think it's important? The, it's a tradition, it's a culture that's supposed to survive over the years. Um, the more you're, you're attached to it, the more it will, it, it will survive and uh, last. Um, it's, it's, it's like a, a sign of, of the country. When you, see an, uh, when you see an Emirati attire with the Kandura Agar and the Bisht, you will know this is Emirati. Even after 100 years, you will know that this is Emirati. From... Uh, my little experience, uh, I used to go through uh, archives, old archives of pictures, and I, or anybody could uh, locate that picture. They can know where was that picture taken, that where was that uh, uniform uh, from. And when you see, um, the uniform of Peru, when you see the uniform of uh, United Arab Emirates, even a hundred years from now, you will look and you will know this is an, this is an Emirati attire. This is, an, this is the Emirati look, how it used to be before 100, 200, 300 years. You can, you can know. It's a signature of the country. You cannot, it's just like a flag of the country. Uh, something very important, very important. That's in my opinion. Um, and uh, of course, uh, by the way, I liked from, uh, I liked the tokiya, which is the hat, which is an Arabic taqiyya. It's very much related to Arabic. The, that hat, uh, when you said, Tokiya, I knew that there's something something related to Arabic. In Arabic, we call, in one of the accents, we call it Taqiyya. Uh, so the hat Taqiyya, there is a link. It's, it's, it's a small world. There is a, there is a link between all cultures. And I'm sure if, 
if we look more into the costumes of Peru, we will find bests. We will find the bests the in, in kind of a different way, a different design. But I'm sure we will find bests there. Thank you very much, sir. Claudia, do you have do you have anything to add? Yes, uh, I really like what he said because definitely we are related. For example, in my in my personal experience, um, I, I got inspired in the Peruvian Paso horse and I study it a lot okay. and uh, the Peruvian Paso horse. And we can see that it came from, from Europe, but it's a fusion of the Bere Bere, which is a type of Arabic horse, and the Andalusian, both, both together came, um, made the Peruvian Paso horse. So we are related, definitely, definitely. And um, uh, I think uh, also the um, Tapada Limeña has a very, uh, in a certain way, uh, a, part, uh, a type of influence from, from Asia as well. Yes. yes. Thank you. Well, uh, Claudia, if you have uh, any questions, uh, Sam can start. Yes, I would like to to ask uh, Hussam, how have you implement how how let's see how have you implemented the textiles in your collection? Well, um, there are two uh, main seasons here in in the region: uh, the summer and the winter. So we use the light ones, the the hand weaved wool for the for the summertime about the best I'm talking, and uh, the light cotton kanduras for uh, for the summer too. Uh, in the winter, we change to the wool, like heavy wool kandura, and the heavy bests and the heavy uh, shawls instead of the normal legato, the plain cotton one. So we. Uh, we relate this by the by the the season and the occasion. Uh, we put uh, the ma the the major color for the occasion: the uh, white, black, and the desert brown for the uh, um, for the whole uniform. And so, two two factors like uh, the season and the occasion will effect uh, in choosing the textiles or choosing the fabrics in the costume. Yeah. Thank you very much, Hassan. And if you have any question for Claudia, let's go ahead. Um, I have a question about the factors affected the uniform or the costume of uh, Peru, like what what affected that uh, uniform that we see now, and you, we have seen many amazing uh, uh, pieces in, in your collection, mashallah. And we would like to know what what factors affected to reach to this. Normally, like I mentioned, thank you for your question. Normally, uh, the in the during the colonial period, we got a. Um, um, influenced by the uh, Spanish uh, people. They came and they brought their own culture. So they, they, they said that we have to stop creating, believing in our gods, changing the way we used to dress. Um, so they, they like imposed that. So we got rebel and said, no, we don't have, we can't, we, we, we will not accept it. So, and they will used to burn our, our national attire to, to, to force us to use it, which was not fair during that time. So what they do, they accept it in a certain way because they were forced to, but they kept the tradition. They kept the tunic, they put it on top. So they created a fusion, you know, through the, through the years, we see that there's a fusion between the Spanish influence and the Peruvian ones. And it, it became really nice because we created uh, different colors, embroideries. It's like a new a new fashion show. Very nice. And I think we, we kept it through the years and it's now going through generation through generation. Yes. 
Thank you. Perfect. Do you have any more questions? Claudia or Sam? Unmute, just unmute, Claudia, yes? Okay, I would like yeah. to ask Sam, um, for example, uh, how he has contributed as a designer to his country? Um, to be honest, I, I have been um, pushing people like where, wherever I go, wherever I participate, asking people to, to look too much into details of um, the, the culture of costume, the culture of uniform, look into details. Uh, we are all in, in the world, we are all like one country, we are all uh, human beings, but there are specific reasons or specific conditions that we are in to choose our uh, costume and the, the national attire that we, we have now. So look into it and respect it. That's always I uh, have focused on that. Wherever I go, respect. I ask people uh, uh, to respect the national dress, the national uniform. Don't mess with it because uh, that means a lot to the country and wherever you go, you should learn about the country and you should learn about the uniform of the country, how to wear it, how to put it on in a way that is not offensive. It should be, uh, it should be a very respectful way. Um, so uh, th that's, that's a sample of what I try to, uh, to uh, communicate to the people, to the cultures, to wherever I go. Look into details of your costume, look into details of your uh, uniform and your culture and respect it. Respect other cultures, respect the, the uniform itself. That means you're respecting at least you're, you're, you're paying respect to the, to the culture you're uh, talking about. I hope that answered your, your question. Yes, Hassan, if you have any question as well. A, uh, a question to Ms. Claudia about the age or if uh, you know how many changes until they reach to the last uniform that we have now of Peru, the last one, the last uniform. How, how old is it? I know that there have been many changes. Uh, I've seen beautiful colors in the, uh, in the costumes. Until we reach to the last one, the last uniform, how many times has it changed until it, last, uh, until it uh, became what it is at the moment? Well, I remember that I mentioned, for example, thank you for your question. I, I, I remember I mentioned the five eras, you know, the pre Inca, the Inca, the colonial, the republic, and the modernity. So he came through all those stages, okay? Obviously, it, it depends on the region, okay? For example, in the coast, got more influence in the mountains and in the jungle as well. But what I would like to point out is that we keep the tradition. It could be a little, little changes, but we don't have any more the Spanish influence anymore. So we have our own identity nowadays. So we respect it and we, we are proud to show it. So I invite you to come to my country to show you a little bit about it, uh, their colors, their embroidery, their techniques, they're, they're weaving the loom and uh, it's basically um, I can tell you that the tradition now is well respected and we are very proud. We have so many uh, events, uh, dances that shows uh, a little bit of what we are. So thank you. Well, uh, 
Thank you very much. And we came uh, to the end of this uh, session. Many thanks uh, to Mr. Hussam Mohammed Jabbar, a consultant uh, specialized in the UAE National Press, and uh, Mrs. Claudia Bertolero, fashion designer. And we look forward to seeing uh, both of you in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.